feel free to leave your video on because it's uh, it's quite nice to see people as long as the uh, connection is good and uh, for raising the hand in this tool you find uh, on the bottom of your screen three dots next to the red cross and left of that you find a smiley and there you can click and then you see one of the functions there is uh, is raise hands um so coming to the to the uh, agenda um nina i cannot see it yet uh, if you make another click yeah so i think um uh, the first point was planned to give an overview of the global research alliance um i sense that um that might not be necessary as uh, uh probably most of you guys here are familiar with what the global research alliance is uh, is that correct or should we actually uh uh do that okay i don't see anything then the, then we will present the agri benchmark network and current activities um then we have a result from the survey uh, thank you for filling this out while registering to the uh event uh, and then we will go to the uh, breakout sessions um where we will have an introduction of the participants and then a round trip uh, where uh, we think it makes sense to find out from you uh, to approach the whole uh, issue from from content wise let's say we have prepared a few questions here and then we will go back in the plenary session and uh, report from the breakout sessions and uh, then the idea is to to look at the next steps and uh, closing so that's basically the um the agenda uh, so should we still um nina should we still briefly present the gra and and how this uh, integrated research network uh, group fits into this yeah okay then go yeah, ahead I, please i try to be i'm also uh, here uh, jean francois uh, from uh, the uh, as IRG co-chair so maybe nina you could start and maybe i can say a few words after yeah that would be great <laughs> thank you okay yeah so um, just to give you a quick overview here on this map, you see that the GIA um, today has 46, um, uh, 64 member countries. So the GIA was launched in 2009 at the climate conference in Copenhagen and um, since then continues to grow. And the aim of the GIA is to bring countries together to find ways to grow more food without growing greenhouse gas emissions and especially focuses here on research activities and the way the GIA works is through these four research groups, which is um, Pettywise, Livestock, Cropplands and the Integrative Research Group. And the latter one is also the research group that our network belongs to. And some years ago, it was estimated that around 3000 scientists are actually involved in the support or activities um, within the GRA. And here on this slide, you see an overview of some of the um, partners of the GIA to bridge actually um, policy and science. And you see some regional inter and international development or research funding agencies, UN agencies. And also the GIA is an observer of the IPCC um, process. So that allows through the GIA membership to nominate authors into the IPCC process. And if we now look closer at the um, research groups, um, we see um, all these research networks under these um, four research groups, which are actually open to everyone. And here in the last research group in the integrative research group, which, which is also co-shared um, by Jean-Francois um, Susanna, who is also here today. Um, um, we are here at the Farm to Regional Scale Integration Network, which was um, established um, some years ago by Petra Havlik, and by that time um, focused a lot on um, regional scale modeling, which a focus that we might be shifting a bit, but this is also open to the group today and something to discuss later. And maybe something for your interest, um, this two other networks, the inventories and NDC network and the circular food systems network, they also uh, meet this month. So if you're interested to join these meetings, just write me a message. Um, yeah, John Francois, I don't know if you want to add something here. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Nina. And uh, good morning, uh, all. Uh, morning to uh, AgriBenchmark uh, colleagues and uh, great to see uh, this meeting. 
So uh, as you already explained, uh, Nina, we, we are seeing now uh, this uh, move uh, to have uh, uh, with our integrative uh, research group uh, the renewal of this farm to regional scale uh, integration. And um, as you explained before, we had uh, in recent years some activities at regional scale, especially with YASA, leading uh, with Pet Havlik uh, this uh, dimension. Uh, but uh, we struggled having uh, some farm scale work. I must say initially there was an arrangement uh, uh, with a colleague in Canada that uh, could have uh, actually coordinated uh, the modeling at a farm scale, but this uh, he was in the end not available. Uh, so we are really uh, from, uh, with my co-chairs uh, from Canada and Australia, we are really glad to see uh, uh, that uh, we have now this uh, push uh, with AgriBenchmark uh, to coordinate uh, this activity. So it's um, great and uh, I look forward to, uh, to the meeting. And I think that uh, from my own experience, uh, <clears throat> I've been involved in modeling, especially at a range of scales uh, from uh, field scale uh, to, to region and also to including farm scale. The farm scale is really crucial because that is where the management activities take place and it's very complex. And usually we don't have the data. So uh, getting together every benchmark, which is very strong in terms of data and uh, some of the uh, modeling groups uh, <clears throat> creating also a sort of a science to policy interface within the GRA is a fantastic opportunity uh, to make some advances. So here again, thank you to all colleagues involved. Yeah, big thank you to you. And I think that's also a good um, hint to um, give the word to my colleague Yelto. And before I wanted to present here this map um, of Agri benchmark activities, um, which you see um, in the colored countries and the green dots, which are member countries of the GIA. And we actually see a lot of overlap here, which um, brings a big potential for collaboration. Um, yeah, and with this, um, I hand over to Yelto, who will present some possible connecting points between Acquis Benchmark and the GIA. Yeah, Nina, thank you very much for handing over to me. Uh, once again, welcome to all the participants, also from my side. Um, the idea from this very, very brief end, uh, presentation is really to give you some key background information about what we do. Of course, today is not the right place to discuss that in detail, but of course, we are more than happy to take any questions, maybe also like afterwards in a, on a bilateral basis, if you're interested to learn more. Okay, so can you please continue? So uh, the AgriBenchmark is basically an expert network which started about 20 years ago. Uh, the, uh, it is a global nonprofit and independent network which is coordinated by the German Tunin Institute. Um, and our key selling point, I would say, is that we have standardized methods uh, which ensures global the comparability of results. That means if we talk about depreciation in Kenya, it's exactly uh, calculated the same way as if we calculate something for, I say, US or New Zealand. Um, we are organized uh, branch-wise. Uh, we, have, we have partners in uh, more than 60 countries. Uh, but the, the partnership is branch-wise organized. Uh, so we have a beef and sheep and pig network, which Klaus is coordinating. We have a colleague in horticulture, uh, one in aquaculture, and one in crops, which is myself. Um, so that's just a very broad overview. Um, can you continue? Hmm. Schade eigentlich. Um, so uh, our key uh, instrument by which we operate is we have we de collect data on typical farms. Uh, and what a typical farm is for those who are not familiar with the concept, I think the best way to do it is to think about of a case study. So it's um, it is meant to represent 
the uh, key technical features and the key economic data for prevailing production systems. That means it's not an average across a number of farms, but it's representative for a major share of output. Um, so just to give you an idea, we, we differentiate, for instance, between no-till versus conventional till. Uh, we, we differentiate, of course, intensity levels for crop care and fertilizer. Or if you talk about uh, livestock, we differentiate different housing systems, whether feeding is with grass or silage or corn. Um, and uh, just to give you an idea, we always talk about, to illustrate that, we, we are interested in the difference between a burger and a pizza, uh, but we don't care that much whether the burger has tomato on it or not. And we would not claim that that we can represent the tomatoes on, on top of that, but we can illustrate the difference between the key features of the two uh, production systems. And I think that that's the idea behind this <clears throat> uh, picture. Uh, can you continue, please? Um, and the, the, the key idea is that we don't do the data collection ourselves, but rather we have uh, in our member countries, we have partners who themselves, which are in science like ourselves uh, most of the time, but also sometimes uh, advisory companies. And those partners, they collaborate with regional farm advisors and producers to establish the typical farms, but also they monitor the evolution over time. So this is uh, annually updated. And we also consider this, this contact with growers and advisor as a very good opportunity to cross check uh, ideas and in innovations, how they, they would uh, fit to the current farming systems. And that is for instance, very important when it comes to greenhouse gas mitigation strategies, which we then uh, present to growers and advisors uh, and to discuss what, what the consequences might be if they would be incentivized to change their practice. Okay. Ah, I forgot to mention, if, if, you, if you receive the presentation, there is a link here at the top under here where you can find a more comprehensive and uh, a more scientific explanation of the entire concept. So if you're interested, feel free to download that. Please continue. Um, what is also important to know is that uh, since we are a um, initiative by the Tune Institute, but we don't get comprehensive funding, we have a close collaboration both with research institutions, but also with agribusiness companies. Uh, which are the latter are supporting the networks in running the network in conducting annual conferences and develop new tools and new new software. Yeah. And this slide is to illustrate some of the results. So we have, of course, if you, what you see on the left hand side. Uh, you do, we do an international benchmarking for some key cost component. This is here for, for livestock. Uh, we then have the ability to have a very detailed breakdown of different cost elements. That is, of course, also interesting when it comes to the impact from climate change uh, or climate mitigation strategies. And, but we also have a very strong, whoops, we have a very strong database on international trade and stuff like that, which you can see on the right hand side. Yeah, please. Yeah, and uh, at the very end of my presentation, I want to share you share with you one example of research that we have been doing currently on greenhouse gas mitigation potential in corn production. This is a, a, an intermediate result from from a, from a PhD project that I uh, together with Andreas coordinate at the Turing Institute. And what we have done here, we selected just two case studies, one in Brazil and one in the US from, from corn producing farms. And we uh, show here the potential from uh, improving nitrogen efficiency and the, the use of cover crops. 
Uh, and what you can see, Nina, if you click once more, please. Uh, this is the the reduction of greenhouse gas mitigate greenhouse emissions that these different options can achieve. And if you click once more, please. Uh, these are the associated costs. And what I would like to highlight here is that we have two measures which create negative cost, which means in principle, these options to reduce greenhouse gases are at the same time also improving the overall efficiency uh, of the production. And if you click once more, please. Uh, there, therefore, the mitigation cost, as you see, the, the very low, low and are negative as well. However, in some instances, the mitigation cost can be really high, uh, as you can see in the cover crop case for the US. Um, and once more, please. But we see here uh, potential for economies of scale to reduce those costs to about seventy dollars per per ton. Okay, and uh, with that, I hand over to Klaus, who will present the results from a beef project on this same topic. Yeah, this is also a very small, uh, a very short and small example. We did. A lot of work in uh, in grazing systems in South America, and we are uh, actually continuing this in uh, Sub-Sahara Africa, which are uh, the hotspots actually and the potential uh, of improving grazing systems globally. I would say there are other areas, of course, but these are two regions. And uh, what I want to highlight here is uh, for for a, a case study, a typical farm in Colombia doing bee finishing on uh, on grass. Um, is that we basically took a quite comprehensive approach. So we were not just looking at the uh, pro performance or productivity or only economics. We looked at uh, at these two things, but then looked at uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we looked at animal welfare, and then of course you could uh, you could could see at the end um, uh, could look at the economic result. Uh, and what you can see here, um, I mean, this is a very good example, I must say, with a massive increase in productivity from introducing silver partial systems, which is one of the management tools available, um, uh, not everywhere, but in these regions <clears throat> to um, to address um, land use um, efficiency, at the same time reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, improving animal welfare, and then eventually improving uh, profits uh, in a simulation period here of 10 years, which was actually um, specified and cross-checked and validated with the local uh, producers, advisors, and experts. Uh, this is something we can bring here uh, uh, to the table, uh, but I think we shouldn't go into too much detail at this stage. Thank you. I think next would be uh, Nina with the results from the survey and uh, the profile of the participants here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Klaus and Yelto. And thank you to you all um, for answering our short questionnaire during the registration process. Um, so I will quickly present the results. So we got great feedback from around 55 people from 30 countries all around the world registering for the event. And most of them are located in Europe, but um, we are happy to also have participants from all other world regions. And regarding production systems that you analyze, we see a clear focus on livestock, um, but also high share on mixed production systems and um, crops. Um, and we are um, happy to see that most of you are already involved in research regarding farm level strategies and also open for future projects on this topic. Um, also, two thirds um, of registered participants have already experience in upscaling farm level data to regional level, which um, shows a high potential maybe for continued work um, on that topic in this network. Yeah, this was. Um, quick summary of the profile of our participants. Then I give back to Yelto or Klaus. Yeah. Um, 
I think before we break down, break out to the breakout sessions, we wanted to share our view uh, of this uh, network that you, we are discussing today. Um, as Klaus said in the very beginning, so this is of course also not set in stone, but that is at least to give you an idea how we perceive our, our mandate, so to speak. Um, uh, I think we should definitely use that also uh, to cross check that during the breakout session. Um, having said that, so we, first of all, we think we should act as a platform to discuss concepts and results regarding agricultural greenhouse mitigation strategies. Um, we then also think it would be helpful and we, we would do our very best to generate insights about the feasibility and the economics of greenhouse gas mitigation strategies in agriculture so also generate new uh, results and new insights and in the very end all this uh, is meant to help both politicians and research managers to prioritize agricultural mitigation strategies because uh, we think in, in the long run it is important to identify those those strategies that are highly efficient in terms of actually mitigation, mitigating greenhouse gases. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, please don't consider that to be, uh, how should I say, yeah, already finally discussed, but at least maybe a starting point for further discussions when you consider also what you expect from us regarding the management of this network. Um, yeah, I think we now uh, break out into uh, three different groups. As I understood, this is done automatically. So uh, Nina has the is the big coordinator in the background. Uh, so I'm happy to meet with you in in one of the one of the breakout groups. Okay, so. Basically, um, we have four points that have been mentioned as priorities for for join for, for research. Uh, the first one was the integration of all aspects of farm management. Um, so, especially of course, also the the uh, the exchange between livestock and crop. Uh, the second thing which, which was mentioned is. Um, that we should make sure to consider all really relevant greenhouse gases, so not just focus on one, uh, because there are also some, some trade-offs. Improving on one might, might cause uh, uh, problems in the other. Um, then we had a quick debate on how to prioritize farm level research versus, uh, versus uh, regional scale and upscaling. Um, so, I think even though there was, there was, uh, we saw the need for regional upscaling, uh, we agreed that, that for the time being, the focus sh should be on farm level results. And, uh, the 4th point that I think was mentioned that, that, uh, it's, it's crucial that we are able to deliver cost estimates for greenhouse gas measures that then can be used by others also for uh, more highly integrate uh, aggregated models i think we do it stepwise the the discussion right so i would ask whether you have anything to add here or different aspects yeah i mean it would be good to 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 share my screen so i suggest you just go on with expectations and funding it's quite uh, easy uh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm Good. glad you did the funding part because we didn't come to that. Okay. So expectations, we uh, there was the the need for training. Uh, then then the discussion on how to upscale farm level work. Uh, I I mentioned the the thesis from from Samuel that might be a way forward here. Uh, just one option, but uh, at least one that would be shared. And then uh, the, there was the need for involving people who, ha who are not the part of the Argo Benchmark the network to introduce them to the way how we go about it. So methods, how to generate results at the farm level. Yeah, and then there was um, 
there were two uh, funding options. One is uh, an Aeronet call, um, and then there is an EJP call on soil. Uh, I can we can share the link with all the participants afterwards. Uh, first of all, a question to my group. Are you happy with my summary or anything? You have different views or where I missed something important? Okay, thumbs up. Thanks. <laughs> Good. So now, Klaus, the turn is yours. Yeah. Just uh, close your screen, Yalto. Okay, yeah, um, we have, uh, we, we spent most of the time in uh, uh, addressing the um, the issues we would like to uh, address the topics, let's say. Mm -hmm. So here's a list and there's a lot of overlap with what you have done. You have already basically put a kind of recipe book here. We have basically created a list of um, of topics. So manure management uh, came up in and manure storage you see here in the third point um, as a, a nitrogen efficiency. So Yalto, there's a lot of overlap with what you do. And then of course, enteric methane emission uh, emissions uh, in the question, which strategies are most helpful and which factors are actually, um, um, uh, yeah, coming in here. Uh, so which strategy would help most uh, to reduce uh, enteric methane emissions and which combination of strategies that was also mentioned later. Uh, is uh, is useful so that we should not ha have a look at single strategies, but maybe also at a combination. Uh, then again, here crop rotations was was mentioned. Um, uh, uh, that is uh, basically similar to uh, what we uh, what was already uh, mentioned up there and manure management. Um, and then uh, uh, one focus was uh, the, to look at the implementation and practice. So not just in time terms of uh, research and uh, and field trials, but also how can uh, mitigation measures that have uh, basically looked promising can be implemented in in real farms. And what are the challenges? And uh, what are the rewards? And and how uh, can we do some benchmarking on this? And then upscaling was mentioned frequently, of course. Um, and that should actually also include um, a land use uh, vision, put it this way. So uh, as soon as you do upscaling, you, you come into the topic of land use. Um, and then more technical, uh, technically, again, uh, greenhouse gas emissions versus uh, ammonia emissions was mentioned and the, the issue of um, organic soils and peatlands, but that was also, um, which also basically involves a kind of um, land use concept uh, when you look at at whole regions um, uh, based on organic soils and peatlands, but it was mentioned also that this also applies to grasslands in the Alps. So what to do uh, with this where cropping is not not possible? And then were two other things: the uh, management of pastures. This uh, this uh, re relies a lot to the basically not to the European situation, but to um, non-European. Uh, situations um, in, in, in South America, for example, Sub-Sahara Africa, where you can gain a lot with improving management. And, and then we had quite some discussion about feed additives and uh, pros and cons. Uh, some points are mentioned here, ongoing cost, uh, and that's not possible in organic farming, but in general, this was found interesting to address. And then in general, um, uh, it was mentioned to bridge the gap between research and producers. Um, yeah, to uh, to uh, to look at upscaling and then basically um, convert all this into policy uh, strategies. Um, so that was basically the topics, and then we also had uh, expectations. Um, one was uh, to basically look at the success, but also at the failure of certain strategies in different regions, uh, basically, um, and and then bringing together research results um, and compare. Uh, them to learn uh, from yeah parallel work actually from others, and then there was also the um, uh, similar to what you mentioned um, to basically uh, share guidelines or to develop guidelines on on GHG farm level accounting, other issues like leakage additionality, and and I said uh, maybe leap uh, the leap initiative of, from FAO has already done quite some work in this, and even some of you might be involved in this. 
So we have not talked about funding, so I'm glad that you did that already. Um, and, and, and that was what we basically um, found out here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and I think we could um, I think we could actually bring together these two uh, these two lists in a in a more right. uh, let's say structured. I think that we can we will be able to put together things, uh, yeah, in 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 a structure and then share with you for further commenting. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. It's. Uh, but but I would like to ask the group anyway to 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 uh, to uh, to comment on this or my my proposal how to proceed with this particular point. Um, otherwise, we would um, we would come to the possible next steps. I think. Huh? Mm -hmm. But please feel free to 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 comment on this. Can I make just a uh, thing about funding? Uh, I saw there that uh, there was mentioned Euro network. Um, but I think for the big countries, if I can consider them that way, that it is easy because there is always funding from these countries. And for the smaller countries like, like Belgium, sometimes they engage to an error network, sometimes they're not engaged. So this is sometimes very difficult uh, for the smaller countries to take part uh, in era networks. So, so this is not for everybody uh, a good funding tool. Oh, okay. Yeah, I must say, even for Germany, I can I can uh, support this uh, view, um, uh, Nico, because uh, you know we have some. We I found some uh, things that uh, where you know Germany provided two hundred thousand euros and other countries provided uh, five hundred to one million. So it's not just uh, d depending on the size of the country, but probably also on the topic and the willingness to pay. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I mean this funding stuff that that is something that that we will use as an ongoing task, right? I don't think we need to come to a conclusion today. Yes, I would say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then, then I think the next, uh, the last point of this meeting would be what we do with the next steps. So, we 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 would like to ask you if you have. Um, yeah, if you have some ideas about uh, the further exchange, if you have maybe even a project running where you say this, it would be worthwhile to uh, to get involved in this, and, and otherwise we also have thought about some things that we would be happy to share with you. But we would like to give the floor to you first. Yeah, in our group, interestingly, we had like two uh, two suggestions which we we already invented beforehand so there was the raised the issue of sharing results among uh, participants uh, and both like in terms of literature organizing a kind of a website to, for for download stuff but also sh uh, organizing webinars to to present those results and to discuss those results uh, I hope I quoted our discussion correctly. Yeah, that sounds uh, that sounds uh, quite cool. If that <laughs> we come <laughs> to the same conclusion, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, look uh, in terms of um, in terms of the uh, yeah, maybe then I share the screen here. Uh, yeah. To be honest, because why should we waste time on this then? Um, and please, uh, please add your add your thoughts to this, of course. Uh, let me just um, put it in this format here. Anwendung freigeben, Referentenansicht aus, hallo. Yeah, works fine, close. Oops, now it's gone again, eh? Nee. We can see it. You can see it, I, I, I now, now it's, now, now it's coming. Is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we thought actually that, um, that uh, I think this was what Yelta was mentioning, that you discussed the results from previous research, maybe current projects, 
and uh, ideas for future projects. But I think the, the basis would be the results that we already have. And I would add here, um, it would be also great to, to learn about methods that you have applied both uh, on farm level analysis as well as um, on, on experiences with upscaling, because this is something where we are particularly weak here in terms of um, in, in agri benchmark. And it's something there where we would love to um, where we would love to uh, learn and, and, and improve. Um, and then the second thing here is the webinar series on existing research. Um, and uh, uh, so we are happy to, uh, uh, to accept your proposals here, your, your contributions. We also have some ideas, I think. And, um, and the third thing I think was uh, talking about this was to produce a poli policy brief for the COP26. Um, which is, I think, in uh, October, correct? Um, to put some things together, and also here, it would be good to have contributions from your side. And and I think, in terms of um, communication, um, we would actually um, we would actually send you a kind of summary of this meeting, of course, with this presentation, and and then basically uh, cross check with you the the next uh, steps. Uh, please note that on Friday we have another meeting like this. Um, with the with people from the other part of the ocean, put it this way, so rather from the west, um, and that will be Friday afternoon, uh, our time. May I just say one word? Thank you, uh, Klaus, uh, Yalto, uh, and, um, and Nina for for this really good meeting. Uh, just to to let you know that uh, they will be uh, on June twenty four, twenty five. As the annual meeting of the integrative uh, research group, uh, and all of you are most welcome. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the network is most welcome, and uh, we'll report on uh, first activities at that time. And um, uh, we will also uh, try to see how we can work together on, say, policy briefs and such issues, uh, so we we can come stronger at the time of uh, COP26, for example. So thank you so much and uh, looking forward to to next meetings. Bye. Thank you so much, uh, Jean-François. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to make a common effort here and not just uh, uh, one subgroup here yeah, in terms of these policy briefs. So we, I think we can make our contribution to this. Um, and um, yeah, so this is basically um, if the, the 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 proposal we had on the content and in terms of um communication we thought about uh, we we i think we need to redo the uh, the 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 homepage uh, 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 a little bit um because it's a little bit now uh, let's say outdated and we also thought about um introducing a networking platform for example on on linkedin where we can easily communicate and uh, exchange information and then we need to think about uh, a next meeting. So this is basically what we thought from 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 our side. But uh, please, um, you are most welcome to provide your ideas here. I'm just stopping this because I think it's not too much. Mm -hmm. to have a more lively discussion here at the end. <clears throat> So does that make sense to you? Or, um, uh, I see people nodding. Hey. <laughs> yeah, we are also approaching the the end of the meeting. Maybe this is yeah. also the reason. <laughs> maybe, no, one, of one last, maybe one last comment regarding next meeting. Uh, so we don't have a precise date, but our idea was to look for something in September. So after the summer break, is that in line with your expectations, or do you see a need to have a more recent, more quicker reconvene here? And maybe adding on that, the idea was also then until September collecting all your um, the documents you share with us. Um, mm -hmm. So the first action step we pointed out here, and then we would use the next meeting to um, yeah discuss the results mm -hmm. and also have a better idea where to um, collaborate. And 
feel free to also um, connect um, beforehand on the networking platform that we will provide in the next weeks. Okay. okay. <laughs> now everybody fell silent and tired. Um, I think we all need a morning coffee now, those in the morning here and those uh, in the afternoon, maybe an afternoon tea. <laughs> Whatever is <laughs> common in your part of the world. Um, so, um, yeah, thanks a lot from my side. And uh, uh, I think um, I'm, I'm very glad that we could meet here. Uh, thank you very much for the fruitful um, contributions. And we will do our best to compile all that uh, into something that makes sense and provides a clear, um, yeah, a clear vision of the next uh, steps. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you yeah, very much. Thank you from my side. <laughs> and see you soon okay. again. Bye. It's good. Bye. Yeah, it's thank good. You. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you.